Leah Baker here with Aiden Mitzis and welcome to Nauset News. I'm here with your announcements. Mountain Bike Club from 3.05 to 3.55 p.m. Meet in the gym at 3 p.m. and get back in time for the late bus. If you're interested in joining, please email Mr. Picard. Nauset Bowling, Thursday from 3.15 to 4 o'clock at the Orleans Bowling Center. All Nauset students and staff are welcome. It's $4 and contact Lauren Wall if you have any questions. Suicide Awareness Walk, April 28th. The 2018 Cape and Island Suicide Awareness Walk is being sponsored by Sharing Kindness, an organization founded by Kim and Davis Walters. Parents of Jeremy Walters who died by, parents of Jeremy Walters who died by suicide in 2016. Funds raised at the walk will stay on the Cape. YAP Club, which stands for Youth Against Plastic Pollution, meets from 3 to 4 p.m. in C-104. On Tuesdays, on Tuesdays, it has a chance to learn, it is a chance to learn about ceramics as a way to combat single-use plastics. All are welcome. And now, to Leah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Aiden. First, our top story by Delaney Smith and Sydney Nickerson. Next, the High Five interview with Caleb Borepsky and Kimache Blake then sports by Richard Ramsey. Talent search interviewing Carrie Weatherup by Shante Cunningham, things to do with Lipsky Joe, political spotlight by Caleb Borepsky, student council report by Sean Corbett, fashion tip by Anna Mullen and Kimache Blake, health tip with Seth Finley and Tim Long, the special report about the march in DC by Chris Pombo, and last, an extra interview with Corinne Monger by Matt Moreau. Hi, I'm Sydney Nickerson. <laughs> and I'm Delaney Smith. And we're here with your top story of the week. We will be interviewing Elise Burgess on her Hope Project. Hi, I'm Cindy Nickerson, and I'm here with Elise Burgess, Amanda Golden, and Julia Apto. And we're here talking about their HOPE project. Ladies, what does this mean to you? Um, so this is the art project HOPE, and it's a canvas that NASA gets every year that we have to paint something that represents HOPE on. And so we all chose women, either figures who have been activists or mean something to us, or just normal women who, like, just exist because they inspire us and they kind of, the organization we're donating the piece to, it has mostly women employees, so we thought it'd be inspiring and send a message of hope. Can you tell us a little bit about these people? So the, the woman I did is Marsha P. Johnson. She's a transgender woman who advocated for LGBTQ plus rights and um, was fought for the, um, the AIDS movement in the 90s. Um, Amanda here did Amelia Earhart, which like is an iconic woman throughout <laughs> American history. And um, Mother Teresa. Yeah, yeah. Mother Teresa <laughs> up top, obviously um, a significant wo woman throughout history. So yeah. yeah and Thank I just guys. picked a normal woman. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Nickerson. And I'm Delaney Smith. And that's your top story of the week. Thank you. Hi, I'm Seth Finley. And I'm Tim Long. This is your weekly health tips and the topic today is lunches. Healthy school lunch alternatives under dairy would be string cheese or low-fat smoothies. And under fruits and veggies would be baby carrots, celery sticks, apples, pears, or oranges. And under grain would be whole grain crackers, whole grain cereal, or rice cakes. All these snacks have less than 200 calories, 230 milligrams of sodium, and the total of fats is 35% of the calories. Don't forget about drinks. You can get a plain water or a low-fat milk or a vegetable or fruit juice. Not so satisfied with what the school offers? That's okay. You can bring your lunch from home. A good healthy lunch from home could be a grilled and chicken and cheese sandwich that has less than 400 calories. This sandwich includes all four parts of the food groups. Bread, which is the grain, chicken, which is protein, a slice of Swiss cheese, which is dairy, and lettuce and tomatoes, which are vegetables. But what if you get hungry during class? A good snack could be an apple or a banana, which is high in potassium and fiber. 
I'm Tim Long. And I'm Seth Finley. And this has been your weekly health tip. Hi, I'm Matt Moel. And I'm here with Queen Morgan, and her best buddy. Queen, can you please explain what Best Buddies is and why we do at Best Buddies? So Best Buddies International is a nonprofit organization dedicated to establishing a global volunteer movement that creates opportunities for one-to-one -one friendships, integrated employment, and leadership opportunities for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And in short, basically we just um, meet on Wednesdays and we kind of create friendships with people that have intellectual and developmental disabilities at our school and we just um, do fun things at our meetings. Um, how are you doing both buddies? So anybody can join Best Buddies. You can join any time in the year. And you can just come um, after school on Wednesdays at 3 o'clock, because that's when we meet. And we sign you up on Best Buddies Online, and then you're a part. What are some of the things of the activities that you do during Best Buddies? During Best Buddies, we um, play games. We play musical chairs a lot. That's a big hit at Best Buddies. That's your favorite. And we um, sometimes we do like art and craft, like arts and crafts and stuff like that. And then we did rockies. <laughs> we did um, friendship rocks during our last meeting because it was National Spread the Word to End the Word Day. During our last meeting, which was National Spread the Word to End the Word Day, and Spread the Word to End the Word is is um, something that Best Buddies endorses that tries to um, eliminate the use of the R word in everybody's vocabulary. So we had a banner set up that people signed to pledge to stop using the word. And we did something called the Kindness Rocks Movement. And um, we made these during Best Buddies to put around campus. And they're just like rocks that say kind quotes on them. Who brings the action to Best Buddies? And what kinds of snacks are there? So um, we kind of alternate bringing snacks. So we have um, a snack sign-up list, and different people sign up to bring snack for each meeting. Um, we have like soda and juice and chips and stuff like that. Sometimes we like like make cookies or brownies and bring those. So. What do you want to become president of this buddies? I wanted to become president because. Um, I, I've been a member since my freshman year, and my brother, who has Down syndrome, was a member during his high school career also, and he loved it. It was really important to him, and it's really important to me, obviously, because of that, and I wanted to be more involved than just being a member. This is Queen Marco, and this is Matt Marco, who put up with the News. Hi, my name is Kimishay Blake, and this is... Anna Mullen. And today we're here with a fashion tip of the week. It's going to get warm, so you need to prepare for this changing weather. So you should wear whatever makes you feel comfortable and confident during this season. Here are a few suggestions for us girls to keep us feeling good and comfortable. Bring a jacket. Jean jackets are totally in right now and very warm. Floral pattern shirts, blouses, or dresses paired with jacket will look great. Jeans, flowy, and tribal pattern shorts are also in right now. If you're not comfortable with shorts, then capris are also a good way to go, and they stay comfy and cool. T-shirts, including custom-made ones like tie-dye, are also a nice addition to any wardrobe. Vintage pattern blouses are also in, along with boyfriend jeans that are comfortable and fashionable this season. Branch out into new colors, including orange and yellow, or even green or turquoise. Cord cardigans are a fun alternative option for a jacket, and they're super comfy. Have a rain jacket in your wardrobe. Maybe not the stereotypical yellow, but a fun, creative pattern. Rain boots, not just yellow, but blues, greens, purples, and patterns can keep your feet stylish and dry. And now, to Kimache Blake. Now here are a few suggestions for boys. Boys can wear ripped jeans, dark jeans, acid jeans, or just plain joggers. It's going to be spring, so you might want to stand out with the beautiful flowers outside. You can wear a t-shirt with the color of red, yellow, blue, green, or just plain white, and hoodies. Boys can wear sneakers like Adidas, Jordans, Nike, Puma, Reebok, Vans, etc. 
they can also wear shorts. Some of the boys that play um, sport, they can wear like basketball shorts, track shorts, or cargo shorts. They can also wear slides with their clothes. They can wear Adidas slides, Nike, Polo, etc. And they can wear track suit. Boys can add a couple jewelry with their fashion. They can add a gold watch or a silver watch on the wrist, or they can wear an affordable chain around the neck. You can get this on the Cape Cod Mall along with their clothes. Again, my name is Kimishi Blake, and this is Anna Mullen. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shante Cunningham, and this is Kari Guthera, a student in the medal art class. Tell us, uh, tell us what you like about art metal. Well, I've always liked making things, um, and art metal is just another way to do that. Um, and when you make things like jewelry, um, you can always get money for what you're doing as well. So you can have something to pay for your hobby. Um, what are the challenges of working in with method? Um, knowing what to do. Because there, there's just so many things that you can do. Um, and how you go about doing that as well is also difficult because you can't have things that are too thin, things that are too thick, things that are heavy. So you need to take a bunch of different things into account. Um, what have you made? Um, I've made perfume bottles, I've made boxes, um, rings, earrings, just about everything. Um, what techniques have you learned from Mr. Craven? By techniques, do you mean like different things in art metal? Yeah. Um, I've learned how to make rings, um, which are probably my favorite thing to do, because there are so many different combinations that you can make, uh, different materials, stuff like that. So this is a ring that I made uh, using this billet, which took about three weeks to um, forge out. And you can see all the different layers um, on it. There are 19 layers. Uh, in the piece itself um, and the way that this ring was made was we took a little slip off of this billet uh, rolled it out until it got to about this length uh, twisted it into a bar made it look like a candy cane and then cut it down the middle and then that's how you got those little stars so. um, what do you plan to do with these after they're finished I guess? Um, I'm going to sell them um, because they're really nice and I've gotten a lot of compliments on that one ring I made uh, so there are a lot of people that are willing to buy them okay um, this is a talent search of the week um, I really like you're really creative and I like what you have made um, I'm Shante Cunningham and this is Kari Guizera thank you for watching hi and I'm Richard Ramsey and I'm here to talk about your top athletes going into the spring season for your boys lacrosse, make sure to watch out for Cole Ventimiglia, Trevor Good, and Aiden Sullivan, coached by Chris Goodlihaus. For girls lacrosse, look out for Brooke Williams, Maddie Daly, and our freshman, Sydney Nickerson, coached by Heather Stevens. For Varsity Sailing, seek Tanner Coronel and Emily Miller. As for boys track, watch out for Owen Wilcox and Matt Cahill. In girls' track, beware of Kimache Blake and Madiquette Nobly. Don't forget about your baseball and girls' softball. This year, they both have a strong team, and you should look out for Stephen Kalnick and their freshmen, Kurt Thomas and Finn Riley. And for girls, Maddie Clements and freshman Haley Richardson. And this is all for your sports. And now, to your next story. I'm Richard Ramsey, reporting for your sports. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kimishi Blake, and this is our High Five Student of the Week, Kaylee Barrepsky. He is a senior and also the master at jewelry making. When did you start making jewelry? Um, I was a sophomore when I took my first jewelry making class. What type of jewelry do you make? I've made necklaces, earrings, bracelets, and a lot of rings. What type of metal do you use to make them? Um, I've used copper, brass, bronze, silver plated bronze, fine silver, and sterling silver, and argentium, which is a combination of germanium and silver. I heard that you were in a jewelry um, competition. What type of competition were you in? Um, it's the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards, and for the state, it's sponsored by the Boston Globe, where you just submit jewelry, and it's to celebrate uh, teens and students who make 
art and writing and stuff like that. Did you win anything or got a place? Um, yes, I won a gold key in Massachusetts, which is like the first place state award, and then I won a national silver medal. What place did you win? What place though? Uh, like um, first, second. Yeah, and so first place in the state, second in the okay. national. Will you be doing it in the future? Uh, I think I will, but it's the market's going to shrink for jewelry, unfortunately. So I'm just going to have that off as a side to whatever I do for my main job. Okay. Once again, my name is Kimi Shebik. This is our high five zero three, Kelly Borowski. Hi, people. Welcome to Things to Do for this week's Northside News. It's almost April. That means it's only two months left in school, and the April vacation is approaching. Every time I think about that, my mind will just flow away from my body. So today, at first, it's a movie part. I, have, I haven't seen any movie in the theaters last weekend, but we have several upcoming attractive movies this week. First, Ready Player One. If you're a fan of Steven Spielberg or any video games, you'll definitely love this movie. It's about a story which happened in a big visual reality world called Oasis, which is also my favorite band's name. Spe speaking of VR, video games just come, up, just come up in my mind. And this one is directed by Steven Spielberg, which means they can use all the characters from his old movies. For example, Jurassic Park, E.T. and so on. It's coming this Friday, and I'm very excited for this. Second, Pacific Rim 2. It doesn't have a good rate at all, but I was satisfied with the first one at first, which let me definitely want to see the second one. I mean, if you are fascinated with the first one, just give it a try. Third, well, this one is not in theaters, and it's kind of a, an old movie, which is died Poets Society. Okay, the name sounds like a horror story, you know, but it's actually a movie of my, of my life. It's just so touching and insp inspiring. Oh, I love this movie a lot. And for sure, there was a line I, I always remember in my mind. Oh, Captain, my Captain. Since I'm doing this alone today, so after the movie part, it's still me doing the activities part. Through Light, Sacred Art Exhibit, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Thursdays through Saturdays through April 8th. Padmore's Art Center, Community of Jesus, 39 Ankle Drive, Orleans. Expression of beauty and truth as seen through the eyes of the Italian artist Filippo Rossi and American artist Susan Kanaga. A Piece of Cape by Nancy Shidyak through April 28th. Thomas E. Henley Art Gallery. B level of Faxon Center from Moss Hospital. Preserving the very nature of a Cape Cod exhibition, 22 inspired artists through May 20th, Cape Cod Museum of Art, 60 Hope Lane, Dennis. So this is a uh, uh, things to do for this week. Thank you. Bye. Hi, my name is Chris Combo here today with your special report on the March in Washington. On March 24th, a group of NASA students traveled down to D.C. to participate in a march aimed to reform gun laws. Today we're going to be talking with some of these students about their experiences during the march. Let's I'm go. here with Francesca Galazzi, and we're going to ask her some questions. So, Franny, uh, how did you prepare for the trip? So, I prepared for the trip just by, I made some posters for what I wanted to um, say and represent. One side of my poster said, no more empty chairs. And the other side said, um, 18th century laws cannot regulate 21st century weapons. And then I just packed for overnight. So how did you get to the march? Um, ben Nagel organized um, a charter bus. So we just took the bus to the march. And then we used the metro in DC to get from our hotel to the area that the march was in. And during the march, what was your most memorable experience? My most memorable experience, um, I think, so I was with um, a partner and we moved around in like the area where the march was, but my most memorable experience was when Emma Gonzalez was speaking and we were at that point closer to the front, closer to the stage, and there were just so many people and you could look out over the entire 
um, crowd and just see like the massive amount of people and she was silent for I think it was like six minutes and some seconds and everyone was so quiet and it was just really really powerful. Hi, I'm Beth Sizer. I was a chaperone for the NASA group that went down to DC for the March for Our Lives. I'm just thrilled with the Nasset students. I'm so proud of them. It was a hard trip, it was a long trip, and they were amazing. They um, got right into the mix. They all had signs, and they all had great energy and great spirits, and I think feel really invigorated um, that their generation is going to be the one that changes this world. Hi, I'm Caleb Gorebsky with this week's Political Spotlight. Last Saturday, March 24th, uh, there was a political protest, March for Our Lives, that took place in Washington with an estimated 830 sibling protests that took place across the country at the same time for the same cause. Uh, in total, roughly 2 million protesters marched across the United States, making it the largest student-led protest in American history, one of the largest marches in, on Washington in American history, and the second largest march in American history. Uh, while many people are afraid of the idea of gun rights being stripped away from American citizens and making it a constant rallying cry from the right that people on the left are trying to take away our guns, that's not what the left wants and that wasn't the goal of the protest. The mission statement of the protest was to pressure the U.S. government into enforcing universal background checks on everyone who wants to buy a gun raising the federal age of gun ownership and possession of firearms to 21 years old, close the gun show loophole, and restore the 1994 federal assault weapons ban and the to suspend the sale of high capacity magazines. Uh, surprisingly, even in the most extreme cases of surviving a school massacre, the goal of the protest leaders was not to take away guns from the general population. They just want to make it so that nobody like the Parkland shooter can get guns the way that he did in the, at that time. Uh, personally, I think that that is an incredible display of an ability to find a middle ground, and I think that people who are on the right should really sit up and take notice of how students, who even those who survived a massacre, are not trying to take away our gun rights, uh, as they say the left has been trying to do. I'm Caleb Borowski, and this has been this week's Political Spotlight. Hello, my name's Sean Corbin, and I'm here for Student Council. Recently, the Student Council traveled to Hyannis for a free day statewide conference. They attended many leadership workshops and practiced communication on management skills. They won a silver award for their service of excellent book and earned 43 to 45 points. The Student Council hosted Rock the Stage on March 23rd and it was a big success. Finally, on April 2nd, the Spring Leadership Conference will be held in Duxbury. Hi, I'm Clayton Hussey with your special report, and today I'll be asking people what they're doing on their Easter weekend. Caleb, what are you doing this weekend for Easter? I'm not going to be home for Easter this weekend. I haven't celebrated in years anyways. Did you do anything in the past? Uh, yeah, when I was in grade school, I, uh, one of my friends had this farmland, and her parents would decorate every year a bunch of Easter eggs all over the place and have invite the entire school to go and find them in this giant Easter egg hunt. Sounds really fun. Yes, it was. So, Kim Shea, what are your plans for this weekend? Um, me and my family are going to get together and we're going to eat Easter bun and cheese and then have a little party. What is an Easter bun? It's, a, um, it's kind of a bread with different types of raisin. You have all colors of raisins, red, green, orange raisins, and different other colors. Did you do anything else back in Jamaica? No, just um, eat the Easter bun and have a little bit together. So Richard, do you have any things that you do over Easter? Well, yeah, I'm gonna probably eat some bun too because that's like culture to us, so I'll just celebrate it that way. Um, did you ever like do like Easter egg hunt or anything like that? Well, yeah, I kind of tried that last year, but I don't like it as much as how y'all would like it, I guess. Delaney, what are your plans for Easter weekend? I think I'm going to Connecticut to visit with my cousins. What are you going to do in Connecticut? I think we're going to do an Easter egg hunt with my littler cousins, and then my older cousin and I will just hang out. Have they ever like came to the Cape, or do you normally just go to Connecticut? Uh, we normally just go to Connecticut. One tradition I had celebrating Easter was my mom put a bunch of Easter eggs around the house, and we try and find them. So we had a little Easter egg hunt.
When I was little, we used to do Easter egg hunts in my backyard, and now since I'm a little too old for it, my nieces do it in our yard. Well, when I was a kid, during Easter, we had a lot of Easter egg hunts, and I remember that being really fun. But as I grew up, it became more of a religious holiday, and now every Easter, we always go to church and just have time together and spend time with the family. So I started kids, I um, went to my mom's house and did an Easter, and we went out for dinner, that's it, yeah. Hope you enjoyed our uh, extra report on Easter, and everyone have a happy Easter.